Hi, my name is Jarrett Nelson, and today I'm going to talk to you about the effects of alloying elements on the microstructure and the mechanical properties of steels. There are many advantages to alloying your steel. Um, the primary reason that anyone adds any alloying elements to their steels is to enhance some sort of property, whether it's a mechanical property or a microstructure. Um, the, among the mechanical properties that can be enhanced is the strength, the toughness, ductility, or hardness. Um, these properties can be increased or decreased depending on the element that's added and the amount that's added even. Um, among the microstructural properties that can be changed uh, is the, you have the phase transformation temperatures or it might even form a desirable phase that you're, or micro constituent that you're trying to form. Um, you can change the temperatures at which these phases form and say you're trying to form martensite, you can increase the martensite start stop temperatures, um, you can increase or change the eutectoid temperatures even with different alloying elements. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to really use these alloying elements to your benefit. There are also many cons that come with alloying elements um, if it's not done correctly. You could end up getting some sort of undesirable mechanical property, uh, whether it's brittleness or a reduction in strength or a reduction in toughness. Um, some of these properties might be desired, it depends on your application, but in most cases um, the brittleness uh, is not something that you're going for, so you could see where that would be a problem. Um, you'd also have an alter you can also have an alteration microstructure that is something that you don't want. Um, like I said before, you can change the transformation temperatures that these phases happen at. And say if you're not trying to form martensite and you add an alloying addition that changes that temperature, then you could end up forming martensite when you're trying not to. Um, you also could get some phase segregation, but I'll talk more about that when I get into the specific elements. The first element that I'd like to talk about is chromium. Um, chromium is a very versatile element that you can add to steel. Um, the, among the mechanical properties it affects is the hardness. It increases the hardness, um, but it can also cause a brittleness in the heat effect zone um, upon welding. And you can also find you also find that it increases the impact toughness, um, and particularly in powdered metal. Um, the effects it has on the microstructure include a decrease in the critical cooling rate to form the martensite uh, martensitic bainitic microstructure um, in low carbon steels. Uh, these microstructures are desired mostly because the martensite removes the welding stresses um, and the lower bainite uh, can provide a resistance to tempering and welding as well as a resistance to brittle fracture. Um, you find also that chromium can impede the spheroidization and coarsening of cementite during tempering. Chromium has also been found to prevent the softening of a matrix during the high temperature processing. Now, the next element that I would like to talk about is molybdenum. Um, molybdenum is a very versatile element that affects several mechanical properties. Um, it decreases the ductility and the impact toughness uh, while increasing the tensile strength. And it also has some effect at preventing the temper and brittlement process. Um, the microstructural effects that it has is similar to chrome uh, in that it impedes the spheroidization and the coarsening of cementite during the tempering process. Uh, but it also suppresses the segregation of ferrite and it prevents the softening of the matrix when you're doing high temperature processes, things like annealing or other heat treatments. Um, and then you're also going to find that molybdenum will help with uh, carbon diffusing to the surface when you're trying to create a material that's going to be something that's going to be carburized. Um, it's helpful in getting a carburized case um, a little bit easier than normal. The image that's found in this slide is illustrating how molybdenum affects the impact toughness of a material. Um, this was done in a powdered metal um, and as you can see here it's causing a coarse degenerate perlite to form um, and this perlite forms at the expense of ferrite um, and as you may know uh, ferrite is a tough material that would help to increase this impact toughness. Another element that can be added to steel uh, is manganese. Uh, the mechanical properties that it affects are the hardenability it tends to increase. Uh, it increases the tensile strength uh, while decreasing the ductility. Um, the microstructural effect that manganese has on steel um, is it tends to form these bands during elongation. This is pictured in figure two at the right. Um, it also is an austenite stabilizer, so it aids in forming retained austenite. Uh, depending on the material that you're trying to form and its properties, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. As you know, austenite is a softer material, so in many cases it could be seen as bad. Well, let me talk a little bit more about these bands here that you see at the right. Um, these bands form because the manganese doesn't fully homogenize, primarily because it segregates near carbon during casting. Um, and as you might know, manganese slows the diffusion rate of carbon um, and manganese is also known to diffuse slowly during homogenization. So these combined effects cause these bands to form, which decrease the ductility. 
Silicon is a very common element that's used to alloy steels. Um, the mechanical properties it influ influences are the hardness, uh, which tends to increase, and also increases wear resistance. Um, and it decreases the impact toughness uh, when the concentration of silicon increases above 1.5 weight percent. The microstructural effects it has, uh, it breaks up the band structure that we see in the manganese and trip steels above. Um, like I said on the previous slide, manganese can form those which prevent the, or lower the ductility, um, but adding silicon can break those bands up and uh, restore some of that ductility. The silicon to manganese ratio that should be found in these trip steels should be somewhere around 1 or even higher. Um, this is due to the fact that uh, decreasing this silicon content below that will not have much of an impact on breaking up these bands. Similar to what we saw in the molybdenum, uh, the silicon will also increase the diffusion of carbon uh, in iron, which uh, will increase the carburizability, again, for a part that you're trying to carburize to improve the surface hardness. Cerium is an element that can be added to, to a material if you're trying to increase its plasticity and also if you're trying to improve its corrosion crack resistance. Um, the microstructural effects that cerium has on steel is that it orders a dislocation networks which kind of contributes to the corrosion crack resistance and it also breaks up the sulfide stringers which cause brittleness and uh, this again contributes to the plasticity. Uh, in the case of nickel, uh, the mechanical properties that it affects are its tensile strength and impact toughness. Both of those tend to increase uh, with additions of nickel. The microstructure that effects that nickel has is it tends to for help form a nickel-rich martensite and nickel-rich ferrite region which uh, have a really high toughness. Um, this <clears throat> image you see at our right here on uh, figure three is the micro a micrograph of a powdered metal that has nickel added to it. Um, and as you can see the arrows pointing out there are some nickel rich uh, martensite areas as well as some nickel rich ferrite areas. Um, and again these just help to increase the toughness which is a, high, a great advantage of adding nickel. Adding vanadium and tungsten to a steel has similar effect. Um, as far as the mechanical properties go, the, they both tend to lower the impact toughness. Um, the vanadium does a little more so than the tungsten. Um, and the microstructural effects that they have is that uh, they tend to both aid in the grain refinement process. Basically, they uh, help to produce a stronger grains, which uh, kind of explains sort of the lower impact toughness. Um, they, in the case of tungsten, it also will increase the case depth, just like we've seen in the molybdenum and the silicon, uh, something that helps to carburize a material. Some of the conclusions that can be drawn from this video are basically that alloying elements can be a very useful tool. Um, they're used regularly in industry to control several different mechanical properties as well as the microstructures of steels and even other materials. Um, their pros and cons should be carefully considered before they're added. Uh, as we've gone through in this video, uh, they can all have positive effects on a steel and they can all have negative effects on a steel. It all really depends on the application that you're going for. Here is the list of the references that were used for this project. And lastly, I would just like to thank you for your time and listening to this video. Um, again, my name is Jarrett Nelson, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to comment below on the video.